So welcome back from uh, a good weekend. Hopefully uh, it, was, it was a restful one because you're going to need your sleep the next <laughs> three weeks or so. Um, there are three weeks left in the semester, which means that I have six days left to teach you all of the wonderful things about digital tools that I haven't yet taught you, which also means that we don't have a lot of time left. Um, so hopefully you're, you're well on your way toward having your, your final model of your SketchUp stuff done. The further you are, the more you'll be able to do in class and the less you'll have to do outside of class, which is a good thing. Um, today we're going to take your, your model and we're going to turn it into a good quality uh, collaged elevation. Uh, over the next several class days, we'll do an elevation, we'll do a plan, we'll do a, um, a section, and we'll do a perspective. Uh, all of which, or three of those four, will be due as your assignment 106 at the end of the semester. So I'm really kind of coupling together what we're doing in exercises with what your, your assignment ultimately will be. Um, recognize, of course, that when, you, when you're experimenting on your exercises, you're free to try anything that you want. When you do the actual assignment, cull it to make it look good. If you do too much, it might be too much. But um, in the interest of kind of exploring, uh, I'm very much encouraging you to explore today. Um, so we'll do, um, we'll do this elevation. We're also going to spend two of the remaining six class times working on your portfolio. Um, so you'll have some time for, for critiques and really getting that put together. Uh, recognize that the portfolio is due on Monday, May 23rd, which is finals week, which is, uh, what, four weeks from today. Three weeks from today. I don't know. It's, it's whatever. You can look at the calendar. You know what I mean. So we've got today, this Monday, next Monday, the following Monday. Those are three class days. And then it's the Monday after that. Uh, it's the 23rd. So it is May. That means it's... Uh, finishing up. So today we're going to work through uh, an elevation view. I don't have a step-by-step -step written out uh, of exactly what I'm going to do today, though it is very, very close to the section view. Um, and if we go to assembly 10.3 for the section view, I have a very, very long-winded explanation of everything that I do. Uh, the only difference is that instead of looking at it uh, as a section, we'll look at it as an elevation. Uh, I will try to write that up. I've been trying to write it up for a while now. Uh, but this may be a good reference for you. I do have video walkthroughs that have been recorded. If you go to 10.4, which is the elevation tutorial, there is a, uh, a video walkthrough that'll do everything that I'm talking about. And of course, I'll record the lecture so you can watch the recorded file. Uh, as well. So the first thing is I have to open up my, my SketchUp file um, and I have to look at my building and decide which elevation to do. In exercise 126 I say to do it for all four elevations. You don't have to do it for all four, just pick one, uh, whatever the best elevation is. Uh, and so I'm going to do the north elevation of my building. It has the most interesting uh, pieces to it. Uh, if I were to do one of the side elevations, it really wouldn't be all that exciting. So uh, likewise, I didn't model the back. So we're going to concentrate on that front side. You can use the same strategy, obviously, because if you model one side, you're going to show me that side of the building. Um, and so hopefully it'll be the interesting side. So I have my, uh, my building set up here. And I need to establish an elevation view. And so what I'm going to do is instead of looking at this in perspective where I've got vanishing lines going off to a point here, I'm going to change my view um, and I'm going to go to camera and then standard views and I'm going to go to the front view. Oops, wrong view. Camera, standard views, how about the back view for me? There we go. And now I'm looking at this kind of in an elevation but it's still in perspective. If I look carefully I've got these lines recede back to a point off in infinity right back in here to that single vanishing point and I don't want that. So in, in conjunction with going to the back view I'm also going to go to the view menu or excuse me the camera menu and choose parallel projection. And parallel projection changes the view to be in more of an elevation. Right? And so as I look at this, this is very much an elevation, but it's got a bunch of things that I don't ultimately want, including the axes. So if I go to view, I can turn off the axes. I can also go to view, and I can turn off the guides. And now I have just the elevation itself. Okay? I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that this elevation fills my page. More about, eh, right about like 
that or so. And then I'm going to follow Photoshop just like we did last time. It's um, Photoshop 1.25, I think. I'm not sure where it is. I'll have to look for it. Um, it probably says on the handout. Uh, excuse me, it's SketchUp 4.5. To, to do the various outputs. And this is exactly the same as we did last time. Um, I'm going to go to my scenes. And before I do anything else, I'm going to save this as the front elevation. I already have a front elevation view, but I'm going to go ahead and override that. Um, let me create the scene. And we'll call this, uh, how about north elevation? Okay, that just enables me to return to this particular view. If I were to, to navigate around or change anything, I can always come back to this north elevation and re-export uh, the same thing. So now that I've uh, saved that scene, I'm going to open up styles, and I'm already in the hidden line style. But if you're not, you'll need to go to the default styles and then pick hidden line style. Okay, and then make sure to turn off your axes. Um, and your, your guides. And then I'll go ahead and do the first export. And so I'll go to File and then Export, 2D Graphic. And we'll save this on my flash drive into today's folder. And I'm going to add underscore lines to this. I want to make sure I click on the Options button, and I adjust the size as appropriate. So last time we did 2,000 pixels. I think I'm going to up that a little bit. I'm going to do maybe 4,000 pixels this time. So I have a little bit more to work with. And then I'll go ahead and say OK. And I'll click on Export. So that now has the first of my exports. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to turn on that X-ray mode. Uh, so I'm going to go to Edit, this little Edit tab right here. And I'll go to the Faces button. And when I do that, I can click on the X-ray button. It doesn't really give me a whole lot in the elevation, but I like to go through all of these anyway. And I'll go ahead and go to File, Export, 2D Graphic. This one isn't going to be Lines. It's going to be X-ray. And I'll go ahead and click Export. Now the next piece, after I turn off x-ray mode, is to turn on the shadows. So I'll go to View, and then Shadows. And I want to have a look at my building. Now this is the north side of the building, so I'm not going to get the best shadows on it. Right now, everything's currently in shadow. But I'm going to adjust the, uh, the shadows here. So let me open up the Shadows window for a second. And I'm going to adjust the time of day and the time of year to see if I can't get something to show so that I have a few shadows on my building. And I'm going to have to kind of play with these little sliders in the hopes that I'll get something with a little bit of shadows. So here I've gotten some shadows, which, which makes me happy. It's depending on the, the view that you're picking. If it was the south elevation, you get really good shadows. Again, mine's the north elevation, so it's a little iffy. Once I have the shadows showing, I'm going to go back to my styles. And I'm going to go to the edge settings. And I'm going to uncheck edges so that I have just the shadows showing. Okay, So just the shadows are showing. I'll go ahead and go to File, Export 2D Graphic. And we'll call this one Shadows. And I'll go ahead and click Export. So this is exactly the same process that you did last class in Exercise uh, 125. So now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and go to my Styles. And I'm going to go back to the Select menu. And I'm going to go to the Sketchy Edges. This is where I can pick um, a variety of the styles to, to make my building a little bit more casual, maybe. Um, so I'm going to do the Airbrush with Endpoints. And I'm going to turn off the Shadows. I'm going to turn off the Guides. And I'm going to turn off the Section Cuts. And we'll turn off the Section Planes, too. go. And since I accidentally moved it, I'm going to come back to my scenes. 
to make sure that I have this, which means I'll have to go back through and re-pick re my style here. Here we go. That'll work. All right, so let me export this one again. I'll go to File, Export, 2D Graphic. And this one is going to be Airbrush. Export. And I'm also going to do the pen gray um, because I'm not sure if this one's going to look too heavy handed when I ultimately do it. So let's find the pen gray. There it is. And once again, I'll go to view and I'm going to turn off my guides. And I'll go to, if it'll let me, I'll go to File, Export, 2D Graphic. And this one was pen gray. And I'll export that one as well. OK, so now I have all of my elevation views out of SketchUp. And so we'll minimize SketchUp. And now it's time to open up Photoshop. So I'll go to the Start menu. And hopefully Photoshop will be listed. No, it's not. Let me go into the Creative Suite here. And we'll open up Photoshop. And I'll go ahead and start by going to File and then Open so that I can open up the lines. Hold on, I have to get to the right folder here. And we'll start with just the plain lines view. There it is. And I know these are a little bit hard to see on the projector because they are light. But I'm going to go ahead and keep bringing in the rest of the drawings. I'll go to File and then Place. And I'll bring in uh, everything else that I've done. So we'll, we'll place the x-ray mode. We'll go to File and then Place. And I'll bring the shadows in. We'll go to File and then Place. I'll bring the airbrush in. We'll file and then Place. And I'll bring the pen gray in as well. So once I have all of my views brought into Photoshop, remember I have to change the layer blending mode on each of these. So we'll go through and we'll change the bl layer blending mode to multiply on each one. And the background can stay the same. But I am going to unlock the background. So let me right click and say layer from background so that I have a base layer. So I'm also going to go through and I'm going to rename these layers so that they make more sense. So the first layer here, we're going to call lines, if I can type. Next one, I'm going to rename and call it x-ray. Next one, I'll rename and call shadows. Next one, I'll rename and call it airbrush. And it really helps to start organizing your layers here because we're going to start having a lot of layers. So there it is. Uh, so you can actually kind of see it a little bit. And obviously, it, it, it's already looking better than the SketchUp elevation, just like when we did the, um, the work in, um, on the, the Francis Ching building. This is the same kind of thing where I'm, I'm already kind of improving uh, what it is that I'm looking at. But now it's time to start enhancing this a little bit further. And so the first thing that I'm going to look for is I'd like to place this image into a scene. Now, if we had, if we had gone to the site, if we had got to do the site visit, which I wish we had money to all go to Yosemite, that would be quite, quite fun. Uh, but we don't. So you have to wait for Berkeley to do those kinds of trips, uh, or Cal Poly. But uh, what I need to do is I need to go get a photo of this particular site. And if we had gone to the site, we would have taken the photo ourselves, and we could use that photo directly. But since we didn't, um, part of the reason that I picked Yosemite is because there's a lot of um, photos out there of Yosemite. So I went to the web, and I did a Creative Commons search. So again, search.creativecommons.org. And I'm going to search in Flickr for, and you could do Yosemite Meadow, Yosemite Forest, Yosemite Landscape, something along those lines. 
And one of the really big tricky things about doing this kind of collage work is picking the right image. And it's, it's actually it's an art to find the right image. Because as we start to scan through these Yosemite forest images, we have to find one that's at the right scale. So the background doesn't look too big, and it doesn't look too small. Because if it's not at the right scale, it won't look like it's an appropriate building elevation. So something like this, while it's a nice image, is way too close. If we imagine the size of a building here, it would go off the page. right? It wouldn't fit correctly. So we have to keep going through. Likewise, something like this might be a nice image. It's a little bit further away. Uh, it's obviously in the middle of a forest fire, too, which probably isn't the best for what we're trying to portray here. But I also have a bunch of trees that would be blocking this elevation view, which is awkward. And I'd have to place the building back kind of in here um, as part of this view. And it just doesn't quite work right. So we're going to keep going. One of the things that can be helpful when you're searching is to find something that has a little bit of meadow in front with some tree behind, trees behind. Because if we have too many trees in the foreground, it can be difficult to do the collage work. Um, and so in that case, maybe something like this wouldn't be a bad uh, place to start. There's a few too many people in here for me. But the fact that these trees skew is something that we could correct in Photoshop. We could do a skew and correct that. Uh, and the other thing that can happen is sometimes you might think an image is really good, and then you end up kind of working with it, and you decide, nah, it's not quite working correctly. Uh, so it may take you several images uh, to find the one that, that really is right uh, or works, r works really nicely for you. Um, so something like this, right? A little bit of meadow in the foreground, some trees in the background. OK, I could work with this. This would probably would, would work out pretty well. So maybe we'll go ahead and use this one uh, as its first trial run. So I'm going to download the original size. It would be nice if the original size was a little bit larger than this. Let me go ahead and show it in the folder. I'm going to copy it and put it in my flash drive into today's folder. And we'll go ahead and paste. And now that that image is here, I'm going to start to, to have a look at that in Photoshop and see if it, it feels like it would work for this particular scene. So let me go ahead and go to File, and then Place. And I'll place in that image. It shows up a little bit on the small side. Let's go ahead and transform it. I'm going to go to one of the corners here and start to drag it. I'm going to hold down the Shift key. And obviously, I have to start out by making it big enough to, to fit my whole scene here. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the blending mode on this to multiply for now, just so I can kind of see through it. And as I'm looking at it, I have to kind of pay attention to where the ground is going to fall. right? So I've got kind of a horizon line in there. And I have to make sure that my building is not too high and not too low. I guess that would be too high or too low, so that it feels like it kind of fits. right? So we'll sit it into the ground about there or so. So the other thing is these trees are a little bit skewed on the sides because the, the lens was, was shot with a fisheye or, or a little bit of a fisheye. So I want to do some corrections to that. So let me go ahead and go to the um, Edit, Transform, and I'm going to use Skew. And I'll adjust this image so that those trees appear a little bit more straight. Okay, That feels a little bit better to me. Okay, the trees are straight here. The tree is straight there. I, if I move this over a little bit, we could see that those trees are now kind of straight. And maybe in the overall composition, it should be over a little bit more. Maybe about like that. And I'll go ahead and click this check mark when I'm done. And we can now see that that's looking pretty good. Now, I cut off the top of this tree. And from a compositional standpoint, it would be nice to have the top of that tree. I'm going to go to my canvas size. It's under image and then canvas size. I'm going to pin the canvas size to the bottom so that nothing moves on the bottom, but it's going to get a little bit taller. So let's go up to maybe 30 inches. There we go. So now I, I have a little bit more of the top there. And I have a faint line that's showing up that must have to do with one of my exports. Yeah, I, I had a feeling it was the airbrush export. So when we turn that one off, we're OK. So I've positioned the background 
so that it feels reasonable for my, my building here. But obviously, I need to start cutting out the background because the building's in front of the background. So let's go ahead and turn everything off for a second. I'm going to turn, uh, because just to make it a little bit easier for you guys, um, let me go ahead and duplicate this layer so that it's a little bit darker. And we'll do it one more time. I just want you to be able to see it on the projector. There you go. So you can see it now. OK, so first thing that I need to do is I need to select my building or, or the space around my building. And we're going to create a mask from that. So let me go ahead and I'll use the magic wand tool. And I'll select the around the outside, which is relatively easy. right? And then depending, if you had a piece of the building that was actually showing through, like a window that was showing through, I'd want to select that as well. In my particular building, there's nothing that actually shines all the way through. I'm just seeing the interior. There's no window behind another window. So we're going, going to deal with just the background here. However, I also need to include this section because that passes through. So once I have those selected, right, I'll go back to my layer that has the, um, the image on it. And I'm going to go ahead and create a layer mask. So I'll click on the Add Layer Mask, and it will now cut out for my building. Okay, So I can now see the background here. Um, oh, it looks like I, I made a mistake and didn't include the top of this. But remember, it's on a mask, so all I have to do is paint with white. So I'll use the white brush, and we'll paint in right, that upper part that I failed to include. like that. OK, so I now have the building sitting. Now, in the nature of an elevation, right? there's a ground plane that goes across here. And I need to make this feel like it's a drawing rather than uh, just kind of a photograph that's in perspective. So I need to do a little bit of work with the ground plane and establish that um, as like this is the ground. So I'll start by just drawing a rectangle here. And I'm going to create a new layer called Ground. And again, I'm being careful to name my layers so that I can be organized. right? And actually, I should rename this to be Background, like that. And I could actually move the background layer right down here. And I'm going to work on the Ground layer. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll use my paintbrush with black as my, my foreground color. And we'll go ahead and just paint in the ground. And make this a little bit bigger. And we'll paint that in. So just by doing that by itself, right? I've established that here's the building. Here's the ground and the elevation. And the rest of this is all uh, you know, background photo. This looks a little bit harsh if we start to look down here at the bottom. It's a very straight line. So I'd like to adapt that a little bit so that it's not quite so uh, stark. Okay? And I can do that in a variety of ways. Okay? The first thing that I could do is I could take the eraser tool right here. And again, I'm on the ground layer. And I could make this a little bit more casual along the side there. Okay, that helps. I could come over to this side and do a something similar. Maybe instead of doing the eraser this time, I'll use the paintbrush. And I'm actually going to change the brush so that it's a very hard brush. And I could add a little bit of ground right there. Okay, So you have your choice. Subtract, add, maybe a combination of the two right? to, to make this a little bit more casual like that. The other thing is. It's rare that this would be perfectly flat across the front of my building. Obviously, where the stairs are kind of matters, and that needs to be relatively flat. But I could add a little bit of wave to the front of the building here. To make that a little bit more casual as well. So you guys see how I'm starting to break down what that line would be that's in the front. Okay, Now I'd like to take it a step further. I'm going to use the Clone Stamp tool. right? And I'm going to choose to use the grass brush, which is right here. 
right? It looks like three little forks, and it has 134 next to it. And once I have the grass brush selected, I have to work with the crosshairs a little bit to see what the size is. And when I first start this, it may or may not work exactly the way I want at the scale that I want. So we're going to go ahead and hold down Alt to copy from the black. And that's definitely too big. Let's bracket this down a little bit. So something like about like that. I'll hold down Alt to copy. And we're going to put a little bit of grass right on the edge here in the shadow. And I'll work my way through, right, back and forth, like that. Come over here, and we'll keep going. And so this is breaking down that hard edge. into something that's a little bit softer. And so I might stop the grass brush right there, assuming that there would be some kind of a path that led up to that particular part of the building. And then I might continue it over here. Maybe like that. And then we'll come back to this side. And I'll continue right along this edge. I have to start going the opposite direction here. And so you guys have already used the grass brush a little bit. But we'll continue that along there. And now if we zoom out, right, you can see that this is a relatively soft edge to the whole front of this particular building. And now it's starting to feel much more like an elevation would feel, okay? Because I don't have any of the perspective in front of the elevation, right? It's cut. So an elevation is technically not a section because we're not cutting through the building, but an elevation is essentially a section that just is in front of the building, okay? So I now have this kind of established, and I want to continue working to integrate this drawing into the building a little bit. I want to enhance it a little bit more. So I'm going to continue showing you a variety of techniques as we go forward. This is kind of the bare minimum to make it look like an elevation. The ground I chose to do in black. If you don't like black or you feel like it's too stark, you could do it in a gray or a dark gray. You could even do it in a white, which is a very different look for it. Uh, just so that you can see what that would look like. If I duplicate the ground layer, let me call this ground white. And I'm going to select, we'll turn everything else off. I'll select just this, which again has all the little grass particles on it. And I'll go to Image, um, Adjustments, Invert. And it's now going to be white. Very difficult to see. However, if we turned everything back on, right, you could see that it would be white against, now, yeah, harder to see against the building itself. But this would be a much more casual way of doing it. And on a poster, when you didn't want to have a really dark bottom, this can be another strategy for how you do it. I'll show you a little bit. You need a little bit more collage work so that the white stands out. It, it'll stand out well here against the photo and there against the photo. But since I have no texture on the building itself, it doesn't really show up yet. So I'll show you this one a little bit later, and we'll leave it as the black for right now. I'm just showing you a variety of techniques. OK, so now we're here. And the first thing that I want to do is show what is glass and what isn't glass. Okay, So I'm going to use my, um, my lines layer here. And I'll use the magic wand. And I'm going to select all the areas where there is glass. So let's go ahead and, whoops, not what I wanted. Magic wand, there we go. So I'm going to select all the areas where there is glass. So I have all of the glass selected here. And I'm going to create a new layer. And we'll call this layer Windows. 
And I'm going to go ahead and add a layer mask. I don't have anything on the Windows layer, but since I already have the selection, I'll go ahead and add the, win add the layer mask right now. And now anything that I paste onto this layer will be cut out by that layer mask. I'm just doing it slightly in the wrong order. Right? If, it, if it would be more clear to do it the other way, you could do it the other way. Let me go ahead and go to File, and then Place. And I need a picture of some clouds or something. So let me go back to the internet, and we'll look for a picture of clouds. So search creativecommons.org. Now when I'm looking at this, remember that my scene, I have to be somewhat related to the scene that I already have. So this is a perfectly blue sky. There's no clouds. If there were clouds, I'd want to try to match up the way the clouds look. So I need something without the really dramatic clouds. right? I wouldn't be picking something like this. I need something that would work nicely with a semi-clear sky. Let me try high clouds. Right, maybe something like this. Something wispy. Right, because I have something, or maybe this one. That one's pretty nice. Okay, Something like this will work fine. Let me go ahead and download it. Oh, that's a good original size image. That's nice. Let me show it. I'm going to copy it, and then we'll paste it into my folder for today. There it is. Let's go back to Photoshop, and I'll go to File, and then Place. And I'm going to bring in this image. And I need to make it a little bit larger. I'll hold down Shift, make it a little bit larger. Now, I need to take that mask that I already created, and I'll hold down Alt, and I'll drag it onto the top of that layer to duplicate it. And then we can get, actually get rid of this Windows layer. The other option would be to place first, and then select, and then create the mask. Right? It just happened to be that I did it in the wrong order. Apparently, my brain was not working in the correct order uh, this morning. So now I have everywhere that there's glass, I have um, this background of windows. It's probably a little bit strong. So maybe I'll, I'll adjust the opacity down so that it's a little bit more subtle, maybe something like that. Okay? So I have a little bit, little bit more subtle glass that's looking there. Now maybe I'll, I'll let's rename this, call this windows. Right. Maybe I'll add some, some concrete texture for the building itself. So I'll go in and I'll look for concrete texture. Let me go to search creativecommons.org. So one of the challenges is certainly finding the right scale of material. Sorry. nice. It's kind of subtle. Hopefully I'll be able to tile this together a little bit. Let me download the original size here. And I'll show it in the folder. And we'll go ahead and copy it. And I will put it on my flash drive. Wrong class. All right, so now I can go in and I can go to File, Place again. And I'll place this image. There it is. Probably needs to get shrunk down a little bit more. Maybe about like that. And I'm going to use several iterations of it. So there's one. And then I'll select 
around it, control C to copy, control V to paste. It doesn't matter that I selected extra, right? It'll still be enough. We'll put that one in like that. We press control V. We'll do another version of it. That one right there. That one right there. Essentially, I'm covering up my building here. All right, so now I have those kind of covering up my building. They showed up on a bunch of layers. So you see here layer one through seven, right, including the original. I'm going to hold down shift so that they're all selected. And then I'll right click and say merge layers, which will merge all of those into one object. Then we can turn it off. We can go back to my building. I'm going to select the, the pieces of the building that would be concrete. So in the interest of clarity, I'm going to turn off some things so that we're seeing it. And I'll use the magic wand tool. And I'm going to select those things that are concrete as part of this building. So we'll say maybe that piece, this piece. That'll work. I have all of those selected. I'm going to go back to my layer 7 here, which has the concrete on it. With that selected, I'll click on the Add Layer Mask. And now it will cut out uh, the building such that I have um, the concrete texture showing. Uh, I can turn back on the ground. Oh, this needs to go below the ground. It actually needs to come way down here toward the bottom, like that. And so we can see that the building has a little bit of texture on it. Right? We can turn the windows back on. So you can see I'm starting to layer up this as a, as a photo collage here of my building. Now to me, the concrete is still very, very strong in its texture. So potentially, we'd select it and adjust the opacity down. Right? We still want this to read as a drawing. Right? We're not trying to make it a photorealistic as if we, we took a picture of it. It's still very much a drawing, and we want to kind of identify it as such. Uh, I probably should have included this piece as um, part of the concrete because it's really kind of a glaring white hole here. So let me go ahead and select that piece. We'll go back to the concrete. And remember, I can because it's a mask, I can paint with white, and we'll get the concrete to show back up here. All right, like that. So that's the advantage of using the mask, is you can always go back and, and make those adjustments after the fact. So uh, now that I have this kind of established, I'm going to continue to do a little bit more work uh, with this enhancement. But we're almost, we're almost there. Okay, So the, at this point, we've got the texture for the concrete. We've got the texture for the windows. I could add a little bit of texture for the window frames. I could do a little bit of wood texture, which might not be a bad idea. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go ahead and go to File, and then Place. And I need to bring in, well, let me find a wood texture first. Oh, let's go to search.creativecommons.org, wood. something like this. I'm going to see so little of it that I'm not overly worried uh, that the texture is too close up. Take this, let me copy it, and again, I'll put it into today's folder. All right, and then let's go here, and I'll go to File and then Place, and we'll drop that piece in as well. Make it a little bit larger, maybe like that. All right, And then I have to create the mask for it. So let's turn off some of the, the unnecessary pieces here. Which 
Actually, I'll turn it off too. And then I have to go in and I have to select the window frames. So again, I'll use the magic wand here. Oops. I need to be on one of the layers that has the frames. So we'll say that plus this plus this plus this plus this. There it is, control minus, and I'll move to the layer with the wood texture, and again, add the layer mask, and now I get a little bit of wood around the windows. So let's rename this to be wood frame, and then we can start turning our pieces back on, like that. The wood frame still might be a little bit dark, so we'll adjust that one, the opacity down there as well, about like that. So it's just a subtle difference. Okay, so now that I have those pieces established, let me turn back on. Oh, actually, now would be a good time to show you what the white looks like. So once you have it against the background, you can do the grass texture against the white, and it can be the opposite effect as the black. It just depends on the look that you're going for. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and leave the black on, though, because it's easier for you guys to see it on the projector. We'll press Control-0, and we can zoom out, and this is starting to look pretty good. Okay, I might do one last thing. Maybe I'll make the background um, have a little bit of transparency toward the top. Right, so let me come down here to the background layer. And I'm going to, once again, select the background. Uh, but I want to include the upper portion here. So I'm going to hold down Shift so that I can add that to it. There we go. And I'll go to the background layer. And I want to add a gradient in the transparency. Remember that um, the, the opaque is black, the white is transparent. So I'll come over here using the gradient tool on the background, and I can fade the background out a bit. That was the wrong direction. Let's go this way, back that way, and we can start to fade off the top. It doesn't look like much right now, but when you go to look at this, um, on like a drawing or something, the photograph's going to fade to the top so that it's not just a sharp, punched out photograph, right? Which is a lot of times uh, desirable when you're putting this on the, the scale of a poster. So something like that will fade out the top. So let's go ahead and turn back on some of my other features here as we start to finish this up. Let me go to my pen gray. We'll turn that on, or maybe the airbrush. No, let's, let's do the pen gray. And then I also want to turn on the shadows. Okay, the shadows are still important. Maybe the shadows need a little bit more um, dodging and burning. So let me make the shadows, and then I'll create a new layer. So I'll go to Layer, New, Layer. And I'll go to Dodge and Burn. There it is. And Oops, sorry. Layer, New, Layer. This is going to be a mul an overlay, fill with neutral 50% gray. There we go. Now it can be the dodge and burn layer. And I'm going to do a little bit of selective darkening and lightening. Uh, but remember, I also want the dodge and burn only to apply to the shadows. So uh, I'll, I'll select dodge and burn. Control-Alt-G will apply it just to the shadows layer. And then we can do a little bit of dodging and burning. right in here. Maybe we'll darken up that piece a little bit right along the top. Make it a little bit larger there. So it's a subtle change. If I press Control-0 and then toggle it on and off, you can see that I just added a little bit of depth to the shadow. Okay. So now that I have it like this, I'm relatively happy with the final result. This is the elevation view for what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and go to File, Save for Web. 
I can press Control-0, and you can see that that top fades off, right, as opposed to having a sharp. And if I were putting this on, say, a poster or something, this can allow it not to have a bunch of individual little frames. It can kind of bleed together. I could have a floor plan above this, and it would start to look really, really nice. Okay? So at this point, I'll go ahead and save. I'm going to post this to the course website. Oops, looks like I didn't have all my layers on. Let me come back and double check here. All right, that looks good. I want to punch up the lines just a little bit more. Let me take the pen gray, and I'm going to duplicate that a few times. just to kind of darken up those lines just a little bit. And then I'll go ahead and go to File, Save for Web, and we'll save this as the final elevation. So I know that these kinds of lectures, there's a lot to kind of take in and, and do. Though, as we go forward, we did the elevation today. We'll do the plan, we'll do the section, and we'll do the perspective. Each time, it's using kind of the same skills. So you already did this a little bit last class when you brought the, the Francis Ching cube house and you did the shadows. And this time, I added some more collage work on top of it. Next time, we'll add a little bit more. Then we'll add a little bit more. Uh, and, and we'll continue getting there. All right, so let me go ahead and rename this final. And then I'll go ahead and click Save. And I'll post that to the course website. Are there any questions? Nope. All right, I'll let you start. <coughs>